You know, they say stranger things have happened, but I don't think so. This is Dreamcatcher on Stinker Madness. Stinker Madness. Stinker Madness. Stinker Madness. Hello and welcome to Stinker Madness. The podcast for bad movie lovers by bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin. Hello to you. Namely you, Sam. I I, I guess I'm looking at you ah, saying you hello. Hello. Nobody knows that at home, listening on there in front of the fireplace, enjoying a nice uh, cup of juice. <laughs> cup of juice. <laughs> People like cups of juice, right? Sam and I've got Jackie. How are you, Jackie? I'm, I'm pretty good. Good. Feeling Good. the holiday season now that we've watched a movie with snow in it. That takes place during the winter. It doesn't have anything to do with the holidays. I don't know. I, I feel like that this movie had the true spirit of Christmas. Oh, could yeah. you explain what that might be to me? The Duddits. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of uh, children. And, and yeah. friendship. Snow. No. And powers? And poop. Shit weasels. <laughs> this movie is fucking nanners like it or love it or don't like it or any of the options above you have nobody like can it or love it those are the only two <laughs> options with Dreamcatcher. i don't know i didn't i don't think i like nobody it. nobody could say that this film isn't fucking crazy because it's fucking crazy it's fucking crazy i i just it starts off pretty normal and then all of a sudden the poop weasel comes around the shit weasel and the movie just takes a totally different turn. It's it like did. it's careens off the road and starts going four by four in. Yeah, and it does. It takes like 45, 50 minutes before anything really happens. You just have guys walking around. Aside from really bad acting. Yes. Well, Those little kids weren't that bad. No, they were pretty bad. The kids were bad. I also think that the uh, the lines that they had to deliver were just, it was too hard. Yeah. Like. He didn't give him anything to work with. No, no. Well, he wrote the fucking thing on a napkin, so sold it for a dollar, apparently. He didn't write it on a napkin. Metaphorically, he might well, no, as well I mean, Kasdan rewrites this, turns it into a screenplay. Yeah. And the lines were difficult to deliver lines. Mm -hmm. It was all like, mm -hmm. even with the kids, everything was proper English sometimes, mm -hmm. and there was just no way to not seem like an idiot delivering <laughs> the lines. It seemed very easy to seem like an idiot in this film. Also, with the writing of it, I would say that when you whittle down a book that's 800 pages, you're going to have to leave things out, but you have to try to figure out how to, like, keep the skeleton yeah. of the story. Right. Whereas what he came up with, I think 800 pages wouldn't fill in the gaps. No. Of, I... That he left because the stuff that, like, there is no Mr. Gray versus Duddits in the book. That's another thousand pages explaining what the fuck is going on with those two. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I have more questions in this film for the end of this episode than I've ever written down for any movie, including The Wicker Man. So, confusing plot, uh, check. Yeah. Bad acting, uh, check. Fucking ridiculously cheesy effects yes they're mostly cgi but like the concept behind the effects the visuals in this film are super cheesy they're all bad ideas they're all bad ideas like all the animals uh no I, I i am talking more about uh poop the poop monster and torn out assholes torn out assholes and uh uh which is genuinely horrific like that's a that's a terrible way to go but by the th by the second time you're like uh oh butts are comical the, this is becoming quite comical <laughs> the 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 whole flaw with the horror in this film is not because it's so dumb once you know what's going on kind of like you have a, a con a general as you say skeleton of what the hell's going on by the time the horror starts it starts with a man with gurgle guts and he's farting and burping and you're already in your seat kind of giggling you are not in a state where you are prepared to be like wow this is frightening because you're laughing at the man with the tummy ache yeah <laughs> it's just the the <laughs> delivery of every single element in this film is yeah. off <laughs> no he's like he what is rich something or other yeah rick rick rick, rick the poop man <laughs> yeah he comes in like what's what's the going on with you rick I had the burrito at the gas station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ate some berries. I just, uh, it's, it's 
fucking nanners. And as I was saying to Jackie immediately after we watched this film, how did they get other than Morgan Freeman? None of these guys were necessarily A-listers at the time. I'm not. I'm still not sure if any of them are. But uh, the redhead ginger guy, he is. Damian He's not Lewis an is not an A-lister by any means. He is on. He's no. pretty popular in Britain. I don't think, think he, he is. is at all. Well, uh, he's did pretty you popular see, in my book. Did you see yeah. his fake British accent? Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. You, you want a fun fact on that? Sure. That's his impersonation of Malcolm McDowell. Oh, boy. Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying, I if he came know. over here, I would give him some ice cream. You think and he's covet handsome? Ice cream. That's not an A-lister. Yeah. Morgan Freeman is definitely an A-lister, well, but... How did they get Damian these Lewis. six guys to read the fucking screenplay and be like, you know what? I believe in this project. Yeah, Damian Lewis and Tom Jane were supposed to be like, they were the guys that this was going to make them A-listers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and, t- Timothy Oliphant wasn't much of a deal at that point either. No, I, I think this was post-Deadwood, though. Uh, 2003, yeah, it's, it's right at the start of Deadwood, because Deadwood wrapped up in 2005, so this okay. is probably right after Go. He was in Go? Yeah, he's, All right. he's the drug dealer. Yeah. But Deadwood was sort of a deal. I, and I Jason guess. Lee from, of course, he's already done Mallrats eons before this, but he's still popular with the with the college crowd. You well, know, he he's that asshole to guy. to do the Jason or Kevin Smith movies. Sure. So he's right. brought in for the comic relief of it. They don't really use him for that. Funny? Funny. I guess he's okay. Well, he tries to he's be funny. D-bag. It's just not funny. Like, uh, a fucker instead of a fucker Yeah. I'm sure that that meant something in the book. No. And it didn't, or maybe it didn't. I mean, I can only... I thought you said you read the book. No, I just, I, it's 800 pages. I'm not going to slog through that for this podcast. I read as much as I could Where's about... Where's your loyalty? <laughs> it's not, I also will state out loud right now that I struggle with Stephen King. I do. It's The last one that I read of his was Bag of Bones, and... I thought it was such shit that I never picked up another book. Yeah, I don't think you have anything to apologize for if you say, you know, I'm not a big Stephen King fan. I don't like him. Yeah. I, His whole, like, evil is evil because I say it's evil. It's the it's the reason I don't like Philip K. Dick. And Philip K. Dick offers some things, which I don't even really say that Stephen King does. All right. Well, I, I, you know, I'm going to just defend him a little bit here because... He wrote this on Oxycontin? Yes. With- and... <laughs> And and I've been on the Oxycontin, so if he's still that imaginative on Oxycontin, I mean, there there's something good about that one. But um, imagination, poop monsters, yeah, poop monsters. Whoa, that's but that's, I did read the shit weasels were Stephen King. Yeah, yeah, I I did read one Stephen King book, and and uh, I think it was the Green Mile or something like that, where it was actually a pretty decent book, and that's why I read the Bag of Bones. And then after I read that one, I was like, you know what, fucking retarded. All right, well, let's not spend too much time on Stephen, Stephen King, because he has barely anything to do with this pile no, of shit. No, this, well, most His of His name the, was on it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that they did stay kind of loyal to the events, but it seemed like they expanded in areas where they probably shouldn't have, like with Mr. Gray being an actual physical character, which he was not in the in the novel. That's yeah. one of the things I was able to discern from reading people's reviews of the novel versus the book. Hmm. Well, I say since there's so much in this film, let's get into this. Let's. Uh, I'm, I want to introduce some characters. Uh, we know that Tom Jane is this, in this movie. He's the first person we meet. His name is Henry. Henry. He's H. He's a he's a shrink who knows things. He can basically read minds. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he's a mind reader. He he reads his client's mind. This fat guy who's just talking about cheeseburger in his office. He's like, "You killed your mom, and it's okay, man. She was a total bitch. Don't worry about it." How do you know that? And he fucking gets all pissed off and leaves. So he's not a very good shrink. And then he's like suicidal as well because he like does this thing with the the pistol holding it to his head. Like, oh, I'm going to fucking do it. This is the I've had enough of this shit. And then he can't. The phone rings. And on the other line is a guy named Jonesy, who is Damian Lewis. Who is also successful. Who is also successful. Yeah. He is a uh, professor. professor. Yeah. Who knows things. Yeah, about he his knows things. Students cheating on tests. Yeah, but so he, he's also kind of uh, got a tele- telepathic. He uh, he lets his student go because he knows that he's poor or something. I I didn't really catch why he like you cheated, but I'm gonna give you a retry. Oh, he's just you know, a, he's just a soft touch. That's yeah. that's the case with him. All right, across town there's Pete, played by Timothy Oliphant. He can find things. He's a car salesman. Who knows things? You know he can find things. Well, he knows where the keys are. That's but that's because he can that his yeah. he can like yeah. There's and then whatever. He they explained his gift the best. The best, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if I'm going for the one that I understood the most, it was the finger trick. I don't know that I understand it, but at least it was 
somewhat defined. See, I don't think that uh, th- there's a difference in his ability between hit. Uh, I think he knows things just as much as no. everybody else. Now, hear me out. Okay. I think he's hitting on this uh, car or the, the lady, which is obvious. He is definitely hitting on her because he invites her to dinner. And she's like, ah, I don't think so. I think he knows where her car keys is the whole fucking time. And okay. he only goes through the motions because if he just walks straight up to the car keys and says, uh, here's your car keys. He, in his mind, he's gonna, he's thinking, she's gonna think I'm fucking nuts. So I gotta go through this fucking whole charade of, of like, oh, I just kind of, you know, get a feeling and guessing and shit like that. But I think he knew where the keys were the whole fucking time. I don't think he does. I think he finds them once they go out there, but that's, maybe his finger thing finds it, but he even says, I'm good at finding things. So that's his power is he uses his finger trick to find things. Yes. Beaver. Played by Jason Lee. He has the most poorest, most poorly defined ability. He is not successful. He, he I was don't, fast? I don't no. know. I no, don't, he that was can see things and he can like, he has some foresight, but it's just underused and poorly defined. But he knows that Jonesy's going to get in the accident. That's why he calls him. Yeah, he's a, but he's a, he's a tool. And a toothpick addict. He yeah. uh, has no job that we can discern. He just drinks at the bar. Now... Okay, go ahead, and I'll wait for you to finish you, you already, this development. No, you go ahead. You already blew my... Oh, he knows things. No. no. He yes, does. he does. He's got a... F- oh, that's fine, but... <laughs> I wanted to say all four of them knows things, and you guys fucked it up for me. Knows things? <laughs> yeah, he knows. They knows they've things. They've got a nose for... They're knowers of things. They've got a nose for details. Assholes. Uh, yeah. I... You say that you get Jonesy and Henry are, are successful. I think they're not. They are. They're more successful than uh, they're Beaver for sure. Treading water better. Yeah, well, they but, at least have educations. Yeah, but uh, Henry's going to shoot himself. Yeah, and he'll be successful you know, in suicide. Jonesy's wearing tweed. Come on now. Hey, tweed is <laughs> awesome. Screw you, dude. <laughs> Wait, I thought that but was a prerequisite for this all professors. The thing that is the most underdeveloped idea that is the best idea in the movie is that these gifts have ruined their lives. How so? They're all miserable and that they've not, that it's been more of a burden to them and it's never expanded upon. It's just like, oh. You're, but you're talking about the book again. No, I, when I watch the movie, I see this. I mm-hmm. go, these guys, this, this worked the opposite way that it should have for them. Yeah. Actually, being special is bad. Well, okay. So Tom Jane is suicidal. Timothy Oliphant's obviously lonely. Uh, uh, Jason Lee is a drunk. I, I'm just going with what your theory is. What's yeah. uh, Damian Lewis's problem? I don't know. He's but got he tweed. looks bad. He's got tweed. He's got a family. He's done as he's done he's as well un- as anybody. I'm going to say he's unsatisfied. But at the same time, <laughs> if you think about what these people are capable of, are those the lives they should be leading if they all have superpowers? Yeah, I guess so. Well, anyways, they're all worried about Duddits. Oh, this Duddits guy. We got to go see Duddits. Who's Who's Duddits anyways, but uh, they're going to plan a trip to see him Saturday. I've been thinking about a lot about him, but uh, Jason Lee calls uh, Damien Lewis. Jones says, you got to be careful. Of what? I don't know. Then Jonesy steps out into traffic and gets crushed by car. He looks quite dead. It's in the ambulance. And I think even the ambulance people are like, uh, we've lost him, sir. Something yeah, like, like that. They're like, he's gone. No, nope, yeah. no, nope, wait. He's not. Yeah. Six months later, he's fine. So that it comes. Duddits was in the ambu- Oh, he, he, like, he saw Duddits as a child. It's Dougie. It, it's, it's, so Duddits saves like, him, I guess. Poorly developed. Transfers his brain into the EMT's body as a child. I, oh, I, don't, I know, don't know. I don't know. But he told him to watch out for Mr. Gray. Yeah, watch out for Mr. Gray. And the only reason you know that, if you watch the movie only once, is they beat you over the face with it. And by the end of the movie, draw that connection directly for you, like for the third time. But did you notice, like, the first time, you're not, you have no idea what the hell he's saying. I couldn't understand that little kid. Yeah. Is, uh, let's just burn this one right now. Is that it's retarded? Or does he just have no ability to pronounce vowels? Or the first consonant of each word? I don't. Like, does really... he have a speech impediment? Yeah, is it a speech impediment or is he mentally well, handicapped? Well, he's pretending to be human to begin with. Okay. I don't know why he's pretending to be whatever sort of handicap there. Ubi, ubi, ooh. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm not really sure what they're going for I don't there. know what they're going for there. Because, 
Like, I guess it, like, he's got to have some problem with them because otherwise the boys aren't going to find him, which we get to in just a minute. Um, so they all go up to this cabin in the woods. It's like their annual tradition or something. The four boys, yeah, fuck the city. We're going to have some beers and talk about getting blowjobs and fuckaroos and fucker don'ts and hoosker do's and hoosker don'ts and fuckeries and fuckeros. Yeah, and, and throw out. Carve a notch into the wall Wall. that's not yours what the hell yeah we've been going up here for 20 years now how do you know that somebody else didn't just carve a notch in that wall while you weren't looking yeah they must be doing okay because somebody's got to own this cabin maybe they all bought it together maybe it's dud it's his dud it's a secretly rich (laughs) rich as shit (laughs) (laughs) he's actually Krispy Kreme that's how he made all his money rapping dud it's his mom cleaned up in Mary Kay well you know she does have a pink Cadillac did she no I was just kidding So, while they're sitting around drinking beers, talking about memories past, speaking of memories past, it's revealed that Jones has a memory warehouse inside of his mind, where he keeps all of his memories and file. he files them away, and it's quite literal, yeah. this, this memory warehouse. It's not like a nice way of saying, oh yes, aren't we all glad that we have this place where we can go into our mind and think of uh, nicer times. No, it's a fucking place. He can go in there, shuffle things around. Uh, I'm, I'm done with this jerk off material. I'm gonna put up uh, some uh, m- the instructions in my new Apple computer because I guess that's how much memory space it takes to know how to work a fucking Mac. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gotta get rid of all your jack off material. <laughs> Lots of boobs gotta get kicked out. But you know, it's a pretty cool. <laughs> it's a pretty cool, like area the warehouse <laughs> his mind library <laughs> his mind library i liked the circular thing with the it's dream very, catcher in the ceiling very nice stairwell <laughs> yes yeah, the stairwell i mean it i would probably go in there with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and hang out and maybe read a book and then read. hope that this dragon thing comes to life and oh wait that's a never-ending story never mind <laughs> Uh, yeah. You should also mention that inside of it, it plays Blue Bayou by Roy Orbison. That would get annoying. Yeah. Which comes into play later. So, as we mentioned 20 years earlier, we get some backstory here. They're growing up in Deary. It's kind of, this is where the movie takes on a whole kind of like shitty stand by me type feel to it. Like Stephen King's boy adventures again, kind of. It almost, yeah, when they shoot all the children's stuff, it's like they're trying to emulate stand by me. Mm hmm. It's it's totally feel, feels that way. Like, oh, these kids are kind hearted, but they won't take shit from older boys, and they all got potty mouths. But their hearts are in the right place. Oh, they're in the right. I well, guess. they weren't smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the fifties. It was the eighties. They were out on a pussy hunt. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. they were. You're gonna see the prom ki- prom queens of JJ. Yeah. There's a poster in a in a warehouse or a, a garage that. I think it's an abandoned school or something. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Anyways, they find the place, and they they, they also find a lunch pail that is uh, got the name Douglas something, Kavich, I don't know, on it. And Scooby a ripped shirt. Scooby-Doo lunchbox. Yeah. A ripped shirt. And behind the garage is this poor child with no pants on getting uh, tortured by these teenagers who uh, they want him to eat some poo, some dog shit. You're going to eat the dog poop. Yeah. <laughs> I will not eat the dog poop. <laughs> You will eat the dog poop. Okay. It's cat poop. <laughs> so I'm going to burn. I've got two questions about this scene. And okay. I'm going to burn them right now. Do I need to uh, continue with it or uh, like to close no. it out? Or the, So this is, this is, these two questions just refer to that. Okay. He's eating the dog poop. Yeah. They're behind the shed. Why is Duddit's naked? And, and it's just in his underoos. Yeah. I, I don't know why they've taken his clothes off. Yeah. I don't, I, either. I don't get that. You know, the most contact, you, uh, let's face it. When you're in high school, Having any type of contact with another boy is a little awkward. The most you're going to do is give him a wedgie or stick his head in the toilet. That's about as uh, taboo as you're going to get with another male. Because you don't want to be accused of, you know, boink, boink, (laughs) touching wieners or something, you know? So I don't don't know about this. Uh, I guess humiliation. They want to humiliate him, but... I don't know any teenage boys that would be like, let's get him naked first. Yeah. What, Craig? No, it works better that way. Really? Really? Really, Craig? Uh, I don't. I don't think it does. I, I'm pretty sure we can he, put the poop in his mouth. He eats the poop with his pants on or off. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did not get that part. I was like, are they going to rape him later? Or yeah, that's what I was watching. I'm like, uh, is this supposed to be like sexual assault? 
why are they feeding him poop if it's sexual assault? This quarterback's got weird things going on. Yeah, with him. yeah. Yeah. And so then that, that does get to my next point. Who in the hell tries to feed another human being dog turds? You have to pick that shit you up to with pick your hand. Up. He yeah. had a glove on. Like, he had a working glove, like a work glove. So he's got this, like, Like, plan? this is premeditated, I'm going to feed that kid the poop today. That's that's poop <laughs> eating it in the second degree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Like, who cares? He's just carrying these gloves around. Apparently, he's got this thing planned out. He's going to get this little retard yeah. kid and feed him some dog shit. How convenient. I've brought my gloves. The only thing I'm missing is some dog shit and a child. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. There's both right here. What are those gloves for, Craig? Craig, get these, naked. <laughs> these are my turd feeding gloves. <laughs> what? Yeah, like, who in the fuck does that? This this football star guy. He's got problems. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's going to end up in uh, somebody a, in Henry's office later on in life. Yeah, or at the top of a tower with a assault rifle. I guess that's not really kosher to say. No, nope, probably sure not. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's probably going to end up in the best little whorehouse in Texas. What? With a bag of dog shit. If that whorehouse was in a, in full a... of men and dog shit, yes. Yes. Yeah. They've All got right. a special room in the back for him. So the boys have a standoff. They're like, you get out of here. No, you get out of here. But the boys, the, the good boys kind of hold their ground. I actually didn't hate the dialogue right here. Uh, the acting is pretty bad, but bad. Uh, the dialogue's not bad. Like, you know, we got the fastest boy in town type thing. He's going to run. None of you boys are faster than him. Oh, shit. That's true. That kid is fast. And then and then uh, Jason Lee's like, fuck that shit. He grabs a couple rocks and he's like, let's do this. And I'm like, fuck yeah, little guy. Yeah. You should do this. Beat these fucking teenagers up with your rock hands. You don't even have to. You just throw the rock one, like throw one of the rocks and hit the quarterback guy in the face. Mm -hmm. And whatever he was saying, he's like, I got, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> that really hurt. I'm going that way. Ow. Ow. And at that point as a teenager, you don't want to risk having, you know, like a rock thrown at you. Because then that's just evidence that why what happened to your face? Uh, I was trying to feed dog shit to a retard, and this little kid hit me in the face with a rock. Yeah, you you got to come up with a pretty good story to you know make that believable. Bear fight, bear fight. Yeah, I mean you're gonna have to make up a story. It's just not worth it. So Bieber sings to Duddits. The boy, other boys take off, and Bieber sings "Blue Bayou" to Duddits to calm him down. He does. And they redress him. Yeah, and they, they come to the realization that they didn't come for nudie pictures. They came for Duddits. <laughs> they knew. They were brought to Duddits. So was it Duddits' plan to get fed the shit? I, that's a hell of a question. Table it, because we've got yeah, more yeah, Duddits' plan questions, questions at the questions end of this. At the thing. End, yeah. But remember, that's a point. I will remember point. part of the... Okay. Yeah. So, back in the modern times, Jones and Beaver are out hunting, and they see this... Jones sees this injured... Hunter, he's got some red on his face. He looks like he got hit in the face with a rock, coincidentally. Coincidentally. And he's lost. He's like, I've been got lost for 24 hours, and uh, I never thought I was going to get out of here, and I don't feel so good. I ate some berries a little while ago. So Jones brings him to the cabin. He's sitting on the couch eating soup, and the things seem to be okay. And, and, <laughs> and uh, 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 Beaver walks in. He's like, hey, who's this guy? And the guy's like, bruh, bruh just belching and farting and all sorts of nasty business is going on and he he has something living inside of him <laughs> like you know is that's what's going on is that he's growing i mean i know he's growing something inside of him but is it just the the this thing growing making his gases like there's not room for the gases and the thing so he's just got it coming out all ends maybe the aliens out gas a loss when they're gestating maybe i just I have no idea why this guy is so gassy. <laughs> but they make it a point in the movie, though, to let you know that he stinks. Yeah. They they not only say it, run to the door for fresh air, but then they draw a picture of this guy and put smelly butt on it <laughs> with his butt exploding. Fart, fart, fart. Yeah. So Jonesy is drawing a picture of this fat guy. With sm and it says smelly butt on it, <laughs> with farts coming out of his butt. You don't want to confuse the viewer. I'm, con I'm quite confused because I these fart jokes would uh, work perfectly in like a, a comedy film. Like yeah. you could cut them out. It's odd that and we... place them into a comedy film. Not take the fart jokes out of a comedy film and put them into a horror sci-fi film. It just is like what is fart jokes? Fart jokes, yeah. Huh. 
Okay. It's odd that we've had two movies now with the most strangely placed farts. Yeah. Well, Spookies wasn't much of a big budget movie, so <laughs> no. this was. This does is it's, it's a head scratcher. Yeah. So <laughs> they're like, buddy, maybe we should put you in bed. No, I think you should put him in the bathroom, but uh, they don't. They put him in bed. I just need to lay down for a while. It's because nobody's shit. Nobody's mom's there. Because the first thing that happens when somebody's farting that much, somebody's mom like, I think someone has to poop. Yep. I hate when old people do that to people. <laughs> Maybe you need to sit on the toilet for a while. <laughs> My grandma said that to me once when I was a kid. I'm like, no, I am just like to fart next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of have to poop. <laughs> <laughs> So his belly's all big. At first, his chest is big, but then it slinks down to his belly. It's like, uh, I mean, they even reference this later. Uh, it's like the, what are those called in the Aliens movies? Xena, Xenobites? Xenomorphs. Xenomorphs, yeah. It's like this a Xenomorph. This whole thing the, is a reference to Alien. The, the they brains, call the face suckers. The, they call the virus the Ripley's. Yeah, yeah. I was say I said that. They reference yeah. that later. The so, rip Please. Yeah, rip your Please. underwear. <laughs> so Henry and Pete have gone to town, and they're driving back, and they see this person in the road that's, like, buried in the snow halfway up. I don't know if she's sitting down or... But her, you can't see her legs. They're no, covered in snow. she's been sitting there for a while, I guess. So they're like, shit, and they crash. We'll get back to that. Because back at the cabin, all the woodland critters have decided to leave the forest. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I'm curious. There's like a raccoon and a bear. Many bears. And elk. a cougar. It's the woodland critters. All of them. Like Nature's they had best a, friends. Yeah, dude. They had some leaving. bunnies. It was Squirrels, just about everybody. Yeah. So There was a cougar in there, too. I saw it. Yeah, I did see the cougar. Yeah, cougars are sweet. The lady in the road is alive, but she's also farty. And she needs to find Rick, who is the farty man at the cabin. So she is his, like, they were, I guess, hiking. What the hell were these people doing well, out there? They got anyway? hunting gear on. Yeah, but they don't have guns, and they don't mention hunting. Well, like, maybe I got they were out in there the woods. To, to get a Christmas tree. And they're <laughs> they're like their wife hunting. Or, yeah, because they don't have guns. They're out there wearing, they're out there trying to not get shot. <laughs> the good vacation. <laughs> Honey, where are we going to go? We're going to go out into Wisconsin. And, where there's uh, hunters. Uh, there's going to be a lot of hunting going on, so we'll put on some vests and we'll walk around and try not to get shot. Wow, that Done. sounds like a great plan. Oh, so <laughs> we're doing what we did last year. So the best case scenario is we don't get shot? Yep. Yeah. What's the worst case scenario? <laughs> Getting shot. <laughs> <don't> get shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so also the critters have, have the red on them that uh, Rick has got on his face. The Ripley's. Yeah, the Ripley's. So they're grody, I guess. Where are they going? The animals, yeah. they're trying to spread the virus. They don't explain mm. that well enough. Mm. Okay. I thought that they were escaping. Because even uh, Damien Lewis is like, if they weren't infected, they'd I don't be care escaping. where they're going to, where are they coming from? That's the other another thing, like with the you know book and the movie, they've got the virus kind of has a hive mind and it's just trying to spread. Mm -hmm. So it communicates with itself. So they would be trying to just spread the virus. But they say that the animals are trying to get out to spread the virus in the trailer with uh, Morgan Freeman and What's-His-Face. Right. And they are just, just, like, glossed over real quick when they're like, it's called the Ripley's. The animals are trying to spread it. Da -da 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 -da. Did we get all those points covered? Yes. Next scene. We need more poop right now. Yeah, shit joke, and we're out. So... Some choppers fly over the cabin, speak of, speaking of Freeman and Tom Sizemore, and they, they yell down to the boys, hey, the area's quarantined, be here for four, 24 to 48 hours, the, everything's going to be fine. They keep yelling back up at the helicopter, like, the helicopter yeah, can hear you. I don't you. think that's how helicopters work. They don't hear yeah. you. But eventually, they just give it the bird, and it moves on. Yeah, fuck you, buddy. And they don't put two and two together, either, because they're like, this area is under quarantine. I wonder if it has something to do with that guy who's bleeding out of his face mm. and seems to be dying of mm. diarrhea. Right. Does it have anything to do with that guy, I wonder? Yeah. And Oh, and those woodland critters. Hmm. All right, and I haven't talked about costumes in a while. Oh, oh, you oh, want no, to talk about costumes, costumes in this yeah, film. Okay. All right, go ahead. But I am going to talk about costumes in this one because there is one costume flaw that i just did not fucking get okay why does morgan freeman have those eyebrows i don't know the, like, fl the flat top's also underrated yeah and the flat top that you can see through because he it's not he's, his hair is thin yeah i'm like what what the fuck is going on with this guy i don't know he like, looks like the snow miser the heat miser snow miser is it the snow miser there's I a heat miser and a snow miser mm. Uh, yeah, his eyebrows are out of control. There's a Mentat from Dune. You know, the guy, bushy eyebrow guy yeah. from Dune. And I mean, they're, 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 
I mean, mm, they I have know. like yeah. put uh, wax or something in these eyebrows and comb them straight up. Well, There's it looks a, like they glued a bunch of cotton to his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is Does he look tough? And he doesn't even look sinister. I no. think that, that sinister might have been the attempt, but uh, in execution, poor. It's a bad Halloween costume. Like, what are you going for there? Oh, uh, Morgan Freeman from uh, Dreamcatcher. Ooh, you failed at even that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Pete and Henry, they bring the lady to uh, this fire that's just out in the middle of nowhere. They build it. Yeah, I know, but it's like everything else is covered in snow, except for this perfect place, like shack thing that's got a fire pit inside of it that's not covered in snow. So, they light a fire instantly and stick her over there. Back at the uh, main cabin, Jones and Beaver, they've gone inside, and blood is everywhere. It's on the floor, and it leads to the bathroom. Big bloody footprints. Yeah. And they're like, oh, no. Grody. So they're knocking on the door, and they're like, hey, uh, Rick, you all right? He's like, pooping. Give me <laughs> He does. He- no, nope, Sorry. Pooping. <laughs> It's not like, it's not, oh, guys, I don't feel so good. He's seriously like, can a man get a moment of privacy yeah. on the shitter? I, I just want to be polite, but I, I'm in here pooping. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I am not dying of alien coming out of my butt. I am just pooping. <laughs> and they're like, no, man, why are you bleeding? I'm not bleeding. <laughs> nope, just, just in here doing what a man has to do two to three times a day. Uh, he eats the burrito really, at the gas really station. I like it if you guys would go mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So they break the door down, and uh, he's in there on the shitter, and there's... Uh, there's Dead. He appears to be dead. Yeah. Uh, he's got red all on his face. This is not blood. This is different. Uh, when I say red, it's it, we'll just say, as you guys call it, the red mold. Yeah. yeah. It looks like red mold has grown all over the bathroom. It's all over him. And they're like, oh, Jesus. Oh, shit. Oh, God. What do we do? So how do they get him off the toilet? Do they just push him over? <laughs> no, they don't. So they hear the plop plop. <laughs> He shits while they're in there. We should yeah. mention. Well, and they're does. like, oh, he's alive. He just shit. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he just falls into the bathtub. Oh, the... Uh, and you see his bloody, poopy buns. Yeah. Equal and opposite reactions. Newton's second law takes place. The shit comes out and man goes forward. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him off. Bless him off the toilet. That's pretty much what happened. <laughs> I can't believe in a horror movie we're talking about a man getting blasted off the toilet and like this is a this is a primary element of the film. It's not silly at all. (laughs) And they show the bloody butthole. And it's quite grotesque, but at the same time hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh Jesus. So (laughs) so there's something in the toilet. He has pooped out something alive. And so Jason Lee sits on it, Beaver, and uh, <coughs> it's buck. It's trying to buck him off. Yeah, it's trying to get out of the toilet. <laughs> and they're like, I don't oh. want to be in here. <laughs> the judge is like, good job. You got him trapped in there. <laughs> like, huh. I'll go get some tape. So Jones takes off to go get some tape to, like, I guess, duct tape the lid of the toilet down. And then, so I, I hope that they are going to regroup after. If this, yeah. if plan A goes according to plan, they get the toilet tape down. I hope they go out that, now what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> but first they try to flush him down. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, it doesn't work. It just how, makes him more bucked off. Yeah, so it's how. It's way too big to go down. Uh, okay, yeah. It barely shit, fits in there. I mean, it's shit weasel. Oh, he can't flush those. But so, he's slimy. He could have gotten, like, at least no, his tail stuck in the tube. Yeah, I think that thing would be able to work its way back out. Yeah, probably. So let's get to the moment of the film where everybody left in the theater has decided this is not a good movie. <laughs> Jones or uh, Jones has left and Beaver, because of the poop monster bucking, has knocked all of his toothpicks to the ground. And he must have one in his mouth. He's he got an has oral to fixation. have one. They're, they're laying in bloody, poopy, icky bathroom mess. But you know what? I'm going to reach down there and get one, even though I've got something bucking me off the toilet. Hey, that one was in a totally clear area of I, the bathroom. I have mm-hmm. a one question. I'm going to burn a question here. Yep. It's a yes or no question that I'm going to ask you each individually. Jackie, would you put a bloody, shitty toothpick in your mouth? <laughs> no. Justin, would you put a bloody, shitty toothpick in your mouth? How much money are we talking? Well, part two is... 
would you do this if it meant risking your own life? Uh, no. <laughs> no, but uh, I think I think bloody and shitty. Bloody and shitty toothpick. Ooh, my price is probably going to be... And it's not its not your blood and shit either. It's someone else's blood and shit. I got to suck on it too, don't I? You were putting it in your mouth. Yeah. Well, I can't just be like, eh, and then toss no, it in No, you're going to leave it in there. Uh, two million? Two million. Two million. Yeah. I think I'd do it for two million bucks. That is disgusting. Yeah, that's my price. Yeah. Anybody got but a shitty bloody toothpick? I, I, I don't know if bucks, I have a price, but I haven't thought about it too much. Yeah. But if the other end of it is if you don't mm-hmm. you have a better chance of living i'm really just like not gonna yeah try no to no no uh, that that's out of the equation if, if it's going to kill me for that two million dollars then no i'm out man what do you think happens if everything goes right and he gets that toothpick in there then he's like it just plops back down ah uh, now yeah I got it it's like a smoker i yeah. just really need to have a cigarette never, when I'm on the on the john uh, you know when shit tries to eat me when i poop it out <laughs> I don't need a cigarette that bad. Yeah, it's the farthest thing from my mind is, God, I wish I had a cigarette while this poop was trying to eat me, because that would make it all right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so, he, as, as if you haven't seen this movie, you can probably infer, he goes for the toothpick, shit comes out of the toilet, the shit weasel, fucks him up, Yeah, fucks him up real nice, bites his fingers off. Jonesy comes back and he's fighting it. And I love this part because Jason Lee is clearly fighting with something that is not in his hands. And he's like whacking it in the face and trying to, <laughs> oh boy, it's, it's awful. But, uh, the, uh, the poop monster gets him, tackles him in the face and, and Jones closes the door and he's like, oh, you fucking bastard. You killed my friend. You killed Beaver. But then all of a sudden there's a shadow behind him and he turns around and then this is the, if anybody has gone, you know, I don't think this is a good movie. Now they're going, what the fuck? Because <laughs> now there's a spooky alien inside the room. He's weird looking. And yeah. I was expecting Poop Monster, the shit weasel, to go up the alien's butt like, hi, mom, zzz, up his legs and yeah. into his buns. No, it went around his neck like a scarf. Yeah. Because that guy doesn't, shit doesn't bother him. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it smells good. He's good with shit. Yeah. Well, he, he was born in it. Shit's all right, man. So, so then it like leans into Jonesy and then explodes this red powdery stuff out, out of its brain. Like, does it explode and then he turns build into dust back and then goes into Jonesy? Yeah, but then his his form is still there, sort of. Oh, he can dust in and out of no, no, Jonesy. No, 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 no. So he dusts himself. I got this, Sam. Okay, because later, uh, note for later. Just yeah. no, the uh, spooky alien does go into him, and I will tell you why later. All right. So Jones breathes it all in and uh, cut at uh, military HQ. Morgan Freeman has uh, we get introduced to him finally. He's he's like in charge of alien blue team, blue team, which is like anti par- alien fighting guys. Yeah, who've done this before. This is not the first time that spooky aliens have landed and on Earth. And it seems to be quite poorly equipped. It's The war is not going well. Well, they, it seems like they think that they're like the biggest ass kickers ever. And it's like, you guys are doing it all wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, you're going in there with tiny guns. Yeah. yeah I'll wait for that. I'm going to wait for that because I got some comments yeah. on the, yeah. uh, on the fucking, uh, the helicopter raid that'll happen in a bit. Yeah. He knows all about them. This has gone on before. He's got pictures of guys with the red mold all over his office. And like, there's an, been an incident in Montana before that he thinks is kind of funny. And, uh, so the, these aliens are coming to earth, like on a frequent basis. Like they're, like, they've got, they've got it in their bones that they need to fuck this planet up. Yeah. So, uh, so Sizemore gets promoted. Uh, Morgan Freeman's like, you're the guy because you're tough and I like you. So he gives him this pistol that John Wayne gave to him. Which is another movie reference. Just goddamn movie references all over this thing. Yeah. Morgan Freeman may also be insane because we get uh, he brings in Sergeant Maples, who then he promptly blows his hand off because he's crazy. Oh, I didn't get that he was crazy because of that. I thought he was crazy because of those fucking eyebrows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those eyebrows say a lot about that, man. Yeah. Like, you put this guy in charge? Look at those eyebrows. He's crazy, obviously. I never, even like when he says, I'm crazy, and he goes out and starts being crazy, I'm still like, he's not selling crazy. He Mm -mm. just never sells crazy. No, no. He's still Morgan Freeman. 
we must join together. <laughs> I'm, I'm not as good at the uh, Morgan Freeman as you are. Well, I'm not good at it at well, all. Well, defeat so. the aliens by mankind finding our way. He needs to start selling coffee. Yeah. I would buy whatever coffee mm-hmm. he was selling. Mm-hmm. Folgers in the morning. Yeah, exactly. It's just sounds it just smells like it's... wonderful in your house. Well, back at camp campfire, Pete and the lady are sitting around, and she he thinks she's uh, fallen asleep by the fire, but she has farted herself her... to sleep. Yeah, she farted herself to sleep, and she really blew out her asshole. She just yeah. didn't have a bloody butt. Her butt came inside out, and Ripley is crawling around in the snow and. But Pete doesn't apparently notice the blood trail le- leading away from her butt. He's pretty drunk. Yeah. And why is he drinking so much, dude? Pete, fuck, shit's fucked up, man. I mean, you cra- why you not? crash your truck and this lady is di- kind of dying. I probably wouldn't get drunk right now. No, Pete's, Pete's, Pete's a drunk. Yeah. So it's crawling around in the snow, and and uh, he keeps talking to her, and he reveals that Duddits is is the one that's given them the powers to to know things and these the finger business and and finding abilities, whatever. But uh, he goes like, "I gotta take a piss," and so he gets up and starts pissing Duddits' name in the snow. But uh, he starts pissing right on the monster, boot monster Ripley. And then it jumps up out of the snow and bites him in the wiener. The shit weasel, not the Ripley. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the shit yeah. weasel. What's a Ripley him? then? The Ripley's the the red mold. So the whole thing's supposed to be the, the shit Ripley. weasel should be a Ripley. I'm gonna. It's a shit weasel. Hmm. But before <laughs> you have a shit, shit weasel. weasel, people will take this this shit seriously if it's called a shit it's weasel. Called a shit yeah. weasel. You know why it's called the Ripley? Because your stomach does the Ripleys, and then the shit weasel comes out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Toilet humor. So, do you guys think it bit his wiener off? No. It had to have bit his wiener off. It took Jason Lee's fingers off, and those have bones in them. Like, within a second. Yeah. Like, not even blinking. Like, like ninja sword shit. Yeah. I think it bit his wiener off. Yeah. But he doesn't seem to react like, I mean, he, there's a, a moment where he reaches he down claims, and he's like, oh, man. It tried to bite my dick off. It tried to, so he's at least selling the idea to himself mm-hmm. that he still has one. Yeah, he, maybe, maybe uh, a bit. Maybe a bit of one. Like, uh... <laughs> Maybe he's got know. half a dick. Half a dick. Half Maybe a dick's he, better than no dick. I guess he, uh, so. also threw himself into the fire, too. So yeah. whatever dick he's got, he's a- got left is a stumpy candle. <laughs> Shriveled <laughs> up, because it's cold outside. Yeah. Uh, mm, crunchy, and uh, uh, half an inch of uh, burnt penis. Better than no penis. And there's some mm. mustard on there from when he spilled her. <laughs> <laughs> got a hot dog at the gas station. So uh, so it jumps on his face, and he fights it off with some fire. But uh, back at Cabin HQ, Jones has become Mr. Gray. Gets on a snowmobile, and he does the, the st- <laughs> stupidest fucking acting ever. I loved this part. I can't describe Ugh. what he does. But if you've seen the trailer to this film, he you know what I'm talking about. He makes this, like, ah! face. <laughs> he, so he pulls out the snowmobile. He stops. Looks around stoically and then gets this big sheet eating grin on his face, like, Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Let's Woo! do this. And he, <laughs> he's it. looking around, like, Yeah, everybody look at me. Oh, I'm on a snowmobile. Oh. I'm going to jump this motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. And then clicker. he takes off. Yeah. And he rides past uh, Henry, but Henry knows that it's not Jones. It's Mr. Jones. Because he tells got him secret uh, mind telepathy. Yeah. Jones tells him from inside of his mind library closet. Because he's locked himself in his mind library closet. Yeah, that's like the panic room. Of your own brain. Yeah, where all the unicorns and shit you keep are. Unicorns? Yeah, well, maybe I that's... I guess I unicorns just, in the panic room. Uh, hey, they, we know one person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, my God, I just had a poop monster come out of my butt. No, no, it's just a fart. Oh. You better go find your unicorns. So, him and Jones... It smells like you're infected. <laughs> awful <laughs> okay sorry so mr gray and jones have a argument of the mind mind argument i believe but uh this is the first time we hear mr gray's voice sam how long would you like to bitch about this <laughs> i just i'm so done about it like this time around it wasn't You've only bad. been bitching about it for 10 years offline when nobody's listening <laughs> except for me now you have an opportunity a platform to tell the nations how you feel about mr gray's british accent and you're like you know i'm good yes <laughs> tip tip tell you 
<laughs> I'm quite evil. Watch out. Oh, no. But completely proper yeah. and, and polite at all times. It's important to be polite when you're just, like, trying to destroy an entire planet. <laughs> so fucking dumb. You're right. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> One side. <laughs> <laughs> even call somebody governor. Oh, uh, yeah. It's 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 not even just like bad acting. It's it's. Why it's, is he from England? <laughs> it's <laughs> Mr. Gray is from England. Yeah, it's shit. It's shit. <laughs> well, they had to get a creative about how they were going to make you know Mr. Gray's personality him from, different yeah. from the other guy. Yeah. It's almost. Hey. We got to make sure that the audience is uh, quite clear that it's two different personalities because all audiences are stupid, right? I mean, the moviegoers are stupid. We got to make this yeah. super clear to them because they're so fucking dumb. Uh, Jeff waves his arm. What about British? I like it. They're, they've gotten so far in shooting, and he's like, "I just want you to come up with it, something else, right? I trust you. I've seen your work." Yeah, uh, day 14 of shooting, they're like, all right, today's the day. And then he does it, and he's like, oh, fuck, we can't start over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got to use this shit. Somebody call Kevin Costner. Yeah. So they find Pete, or he finds Pete, Mr. Gray does. He, he tells him that he wants to go to Massachusetts. So Pete shoots a finger laser at him. Like, fuck He's you, buddy. like, where's the freeway? And he's all, see, I thought this a bunch. The first two times I watched it, I thought he was trying to shoot him. No, he just found the freeway. He can't Why would use- he help him? He knows that he's not Jones. Because Jones used his mind powers to tell him that if he doesn't help, he's going to get killed hmm. from his library mind closet. Hmm. And so he goes like, it's over there. And so then they're, he's on the back and they're going. So the why freeway. does why does Mr. Gray dodge the finger laser? And why does it make the sound? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but Mr. Gray's like, oh, who taught you that trick, yeah. governor? Pip, pip. Pip, pip, get on the snowmobile. <laughs> Cheerio. Squeeze in real tight, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Core blimey. <laughs> Do I seem menacing to you? <laughs> no? How about now? All right, I'll try later. <laughs> so Henry makes it back to the cabin and inside there's the red mold everywhere now like on the walls on the couch on the yeah floor, it's see everywhere. that's supposed to be the Ripley I don't know what's going on when just grows everywhere from reading it and then reading about what they had described and there were some passages to try to get an idea of what it was it seemed like there was just this fungus that infected people and that was the thing Mm-hmm. Like they could get these worms to come out of them, but for the, the shit weasels would happen. But for the most part, the virus was this thinking fungus. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the life cycle of that thing? And because it like comes out of your butt, so you figure, okay, now it's going to become one with legs later. But it also lays eggs immediately. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It does not make any sense. And I, I will again table that. We'll get to that. All right. So he goes in and. Uh, he finds Beaver, and he's like, oh, Beaver, bro, dude, bummer. <laughs> oh, they got you. That may be my finest finest uh, Tom Jane impression. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be Tom Jane's thing, because like, his family gets killed in the Punisher, and he's like, no. <laughs> so he's like, shucks. Op- he's, uh, he's the opposite of Christopher Lambert. Yeah. He just doesn't care enough. Huh. <sighs> Oh. I guess I'll shoot the people anyway. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he he has this flashback. Uh, like, I, I don't know what you would call it else other than a flashback, but he sees Jones getting possessed by Mr. Gray. And he, so now he knows everything. And he goes in the bedroom and on the bed is a shit weasel and it's got a bunch of eggs laid up. It's ready to ready to give birth to more. All right. The eggs different than the shit weasels? I think that it, they look like little shit weasels. They look like shit, little shit weasels, but, but they don't call... But tadpole shit It doesn't no, make no. any sense at all. So he's like, fuck you, and he shoots the shit weasel in the face, and then he goes out, and I'm going to burn this mother to the ground, gets a lighter flu- gets some lighter fluid, and comes back, but the eggs have hatched. So he's dumping lighter fluid all over the place, and then all of a sudden the little fucking worms come around, start crawling up his leg, oh shit, and he's stepping on him, oh shit, shit. Yeah. You should mention that this is a different batch of eggs. 
that were behind the pillowcase. Yeah, yes. there's a different batch of oh, okay. eggs. All right, all right. So there's still the ones on the bed, but there's a different batch of eggs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is like this thing's like second batch for sure. So it's been hard at work since it came out of somebody's buns. We got a breeder here. Yeah. It's the trailer park nightmare. Yeah. Good luck, welfare. <laughs> so, uh, so of course, <laughs> he spills the entire book of matches on the ground, except for one. And uh, he gets lit with his thumb, tosses it on the ground, and shit start burning up and He's burning the whole fucking house down, but he apparently, I thought one crawled up his leg, but it did, I guess it didn't. He got them all. The thumb match lighting thing is just a microcosm of this film, trying to add suspense where there is none, mm-hmm. and then not doing it. Like, he's like, oh, no, and you're like, oh, he's, he's not going to get it lit. Oh no. Why is he not just lighting it on the side of the box that he's still holding? Yeah, because it looks Why cool. does he do it the hardest way possible so that it adds suspense, but it doesn't. It doesn't. He's just, hey, now you know I can do that. Yeah, so we pan out of the house burning down, and the dream catcher has burned up. Oh, that that's hanging in the, in the cabin, so. It was half covered by that Ripley anyway. It was ruined. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty ruined, but now now nothing is left of the Ripleys in the house. So does the, the Ripley, is it butt fungus? <laughs> you sure you don't want to table that to the end? <laughs> I don't know. I just came up with it right now. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, I'll write it down. All right. Uh, for the first time ever in Stinker Madness history, we're churning this into a two-parter. So join us later this week and finish off Dreamcatcher with us. Visit us at www.stinkermadness.com. Follow Stinker Madness on Twitter at Stinker Madness. Please rate and review us on iTunes and Stitcher. Thank you for listening and get to the chopper.